Hello, welcome to the Thursday, March 3rd, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I brought a quick diary today about uh, some of the fake news and uh, tainted and biased news uh, that you will see with the war in Ukraine. A couple tips on how to recognize some of the issues here, but I think uh, the main takeaway, I guess, is particularly as it comes to uh, social media, not to overwhelm and flood yourself with uh, various news tidbits that don't really mean much in the end. And secondly, not to be part of the problem and not to amplify questionable items. And well, uh, then we also have patches. And the first one I want to point out, uh, again, perimeter security devices, uh, 40 mail by 40 guard labs uh, has an update for you, fixing a critical vulnerability that allows for an administrative authentication bypass. An exploit doesn't seem to be as straightforward as a simple default uh, password. Instead, it says that observing some system properties, you may be able to uh, guess uh, the authentication token. So this would be something along the lines of like looking at timestamps, version numbers, maybe MAC address and such that are often used uh, to derive uh, some of uh, this authentication data. I suspect a vulnerability along those lines. FortiGuard also released an update for 40WLC. That's sort of the traffic optimizer, but uh, the risk here is only high. It does state that it fixes issue with the random number generator, which of course may be related uh, to the problem with 40 mail. Other 40 guard products also received updates, so double check none of them overly critical. Uh, there is a path reversal vulnerability also in 40 WLM. Some clear text passwords are saved in configuration files, but not necessarily directly accessible. And we got security updates from IBM. I think it's a total of 27 vulnerabilities, if I counted them correctly. Many of them are open source tools that have been patched actually a while ago that are now being patched uh, for uh, IBM products that include these. For example, IBM I, you have uh, fixes for Samba SMB1. Uh, you also have fixes for Apache. Yes, I think there's also a log4j vulnerability that is uh, still being addressed here in one of the products. Uh, that would be IBM Open Pages with Watson that still has a log4j issue that was awaiting a patch. So uh, double check it uh, and make sure that you're up to date. Uh, these open source vulnerabilities, particular log for J, of course, there may already be some exploits out for them since the vulnerabilities themselves are uh, older. They're just now being addressed for the respective IBM products. An update for Google Chrome, no already exploited vulnerability being addressed here, but this is now Google Chrome version 99. So the next version will be Google Chrome 100. And some initial investigation that Google has done by sort of randomly changing some of the version numbers to 100 did indicate some issues in some of the code that sort of recognizes browser versions you may want to double check whether or not your web applications are okay with version 100 before it is uh, being released in the near future. Now, one of the little sideshows in the entire Ukraine uh, issue is how different uh, ransomware groups and such uh, declaring their allegiances and is part of the fallout here. We had a huge leak of internal uh, documents and code from the Conti ransomware group. Now, with that, we also got some of the key material and a decryptor. However, it turns out that the decryptor included in uh, this uh, particular uh, dump uh, did not include the latest version of the Conti ransomware, but an older, so it's not really clear how useful uh, this will be. I'll link to one of these sort of random write-ups about the Conti leak. There are plenty of them out there, uh, so uh, you may already have read some of the details about the content of uh, this uh, data. 
And I think it was last year that I mentioned a research paper that described various ways how middle boxes, meaning proxies, can be used as reflectors for TCP denial of service attacks. Well, it turns out that these attacks are now actually happening. Akamai has a write up about how they're seeing some of these attacks peaking at 11 gigabits per second. And that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.